lot of people have pulled up a lot of different meanings for a lot of different scenes in 2001 A Space Odyssey. So that there's something there, even if not everyone agrees on it. You know, there's there's pretty much nothing behind Star Trek the motion picture. And a lot of people claim, you know, Star Trek the motion picture is just trying to ape 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's just trying to be Star Trek meets 2001 A Space Odyssey. And, well, that's, uh, well... Uh Confused Matthew has, has uh, said as much um, during one of his comments. Say, quote unquote, if you've if you've seen my two thousand one review, you've seen my Star Trek the Motion Picture review. Yeah. Um, uh, that kind of uh, later in his reviews, uh, Confused Matthew comments on people saying, uh, uh, you know, what's the matter Confused Matthew? You, you just like films with action in them. And then he brings up Gattaca. Um, which is right, is not an action movie in terms of pew pew pew, pow pow, bang bang, explosion. Uh, but uh, action as in terms of uh, there's a story and a character and things are happening to them and they're responding. Hmm. In that sense, uh, in that, that sense, it is an action movie, as in action, as in people doing things. Yes. Uh, so I don't think that's exact. I, I'm not. I, I think when I, which I think is right, which I think, um, I think goes into pretty much kind of the main issue with Confused Matthew is that he has a very limited sense as to what a film can be. Um, for him, a film has to have. Uh, I, I I know this will sound weird, but it has to have uh, a good plot and a, a good narrative and a, and good characters. When a film is a lot more than just that, and, and a film doesn't necessarily have to have that to be good. Hmm. I know most people who write and most people who narratives think that's weird but um, first off Confused Matthew has uh, a very traditional sense of as to what a character is um, and for him a character is one person mm. uh, but when you look at the uh, the mostly indiscernible apes in the opening of the film uh, in the Dawn of Man segment you could easily just say those group of apes are one character. Yes. You could perceive a group of people as one character. So so you, you may not know the, the, the thoughts and actions of any individual ape man, but you perceive them as a community, and that community is the film's character. And I don't think Confused Matthew can go beyond, you know, one person is one character hmm I yeah I I yeah I I I, I, I can see that certainly I um hmm it, um while you were saying that um a certain expression came to mind I'm, I'm just not sure how to say it um something like um forest he, he saw the forest but not the trees or um, you, Is it something like that? You, you you couldn't see the forest through the trees. That's, That's right. Be. Yes, uh, I would say that. Well, um, might need. Well, I I would say that that precisely encapsulates. Uh, 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 well, what what you, um, uh, well, uh, what what you observed in well uh, in in confused Matthew's very limited view on characters. Say he can't he can't regard a he, he can't see the forest he's only perceiving one tree after another. That's true. Uh, Kubrick himself said uh, movies haven't scratched the surface on how on how to tell stories in their own terms. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, film is only uh, a, a little more than a hundred years old. Yep. It's uh, compared to you know painting, which is thousands of years old, mm. and sculpture, which is thousands of years old, and theater, which is thousands of years old. Um, and 
there's a huge wide range of styles in each of those art forms. Hmm. You know, uh, you know, you can compare a, a, no, a, a Pollock to a Picasso. It, it's two extremely different ways of painting. And, you know, confuse Matthew. I, I in concern in concerns to his uh, perception of films as to what films should be, mm-hmm. um, it, it feels like he's looking at an art gallery and he's saying, yeah, all these, you know, you know the cubisms and the, the various artistic ex- other paintings, those aren't real paintings. <laughs> Only things like the Da Vinci's over here are real paintings because I can actually, because the Mona Lisa looks relatively realistic. Mm. Or, or they, they, they show their meaning up front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I don't want to confuse that as having a preference. You know, you can prefer. Uh, you know, I don't particularly care for Jackson Pollock, <laughs> um, but I don't even uh, really know who he is. Oh, uh, he's a he's a guy who sneezes paint. I guess <laughs> you, you just Google him, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, uh. But but he's a he's a very uh, probably the most abstract painter ever. <laughs> uh, you know, I I don't want to I don't prefer him as a painter. I don't think I don't particularly like that style of painting. But I'm not going to go around saying that's not a painting. Yes. Just because I don't particularly like a painting doesn't mean that it it is outside the definition of paintings. And in that same way, uh, a film that is not a a direct narrative, a film, uh, no, a a film that does not fit a standard three act plot with uh, deep characters, uh, a film that doesn't fit into that isn't a film. Yeah. Those, you know, I like character driven films. I like strong Mm -hmm. plots and there's a lot of good three act films. You know, my Animorphs projects, are based around how well developed these five characters are. Um, and that's that's a lot of fun. Good character stories are good character stories, hmm. but that's not their all. That's not all there is. Yes. Well, uh, uh, I, I wrote a, a short a short story for one of my assignments early this year. Um, it it didn't have a three act structure to it. Uh, I haven't gotten it published yet. Uh, well, I, I tried. It was rejected. Anyway, um, it, it didn't have a three-act structure. Um, it it only had one character. Um, the, the entire story was told through the third-person omniscient narrative, and it, it, it didn't have one word of dialogue. I, I wonder then whether Confused Matthew would, would like reading that story, or any story like it. Uh, I guess we get into the how stuff, in which you congratulate, confuse Matthew mm. for things he didn't deserve. So. <laughs> well, that well, uh, his praise for how, um, which, uh, his sincere praise for how, um, was, I suppose, redeemed his negative review of two thousand one a little for me, um, in that uh, well. Uh, Hal is is one of my favorite characters as well. Sure. Um, uh, for obvious reasons, um, and he he did he he did address the the, the well the Hal narrative as um, well the closest um, part of the of of, of two thousand one to an actual film. Um, of, of course, we've addressed that um, uh, thematically. The uh, the Hal narrative does um, does work. As well, a, 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 a step from um, a, a, a step forward from the ape man segment, and a step back from from the fetus segment, as uh, well a, a, the chain of our, our advancement of of, um, of of our evolution of, of what we can expect of ourselves in the future. Um, sure, some people have some people have uh, pointed out that uh, the how eye is inside a monolith like shape. Mm, yes. Uh, which, you know, you, you can put as much stock as that you want. Yeah. You know, uh, but 
um, to, to say that, um, for Confused Matthew to say that the 2001 is not about anything, um, well, Confused Matthew has essentially proven himself wrong by, um, by complimenting Hal as a character who, who convinces us of his humanity. Um, say, if just for the sake of argument, if, even if we were to assume that the Ape Man segments and the Star, the Star Baby segments don't mean anything, which they do mean, they do mean something, but just for argument, for sake of argument, let's just say we don't. Taking, taking the Howl segment on its own, even with that, the film still has meaning to it. Um, sure. In terms of well, artificial intelligence and uh, well, what it means to be human. 